it's Joe from Just Cheap It. How's it going? Got a great video here for you lined up. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's the heater core, folks. I hate to bring it to you, but um, my heater core is bad. Um, I had all the signs. I had the sweet smell, although I'm a pretty sweet smelling guy. The sweet smell uh, in the car. I had uh, a little bit of a wet carpet. I had the, uh, the heat not heating uh, as fast as it usually would in the past. Um, I had, um, I, I guess, a lot of, of fog building up on the, my front windshield. Um, so there wasn't, uh, there wasn't any doubt in my mind that the heater core was shot. So I got a great video and I'm gonna show you this camera that I used to get this video. Um, but here's another sign, take a look at this. I, I've done some searching and I've never seen anybody put a picture up of their blend door motor. It has like coolant like leaking out of it and you can see it's like all green and stuff so this is the part that sticks up into the blend door and that's the blend door actuator and this is the part you see under uh, that you take the three bolts off of it's like has green sludge in it it's bad shit man so uh it's 100 percent the heater core and then uh, i'm gonna show you a quick video of um the tools i use to diagnose it's a uh, it's a really cool tool you listen to the birds laughing at us because they know we're about ready to take this whole damn dash apart and put the heater core in. So um, one of the things you want to do before you start tearing apart your Jeep is to make sure you do a thorough diagnosis of what you think the problem is. And one of the things I purchased, I guess about two years ago, was this uh, Depsitch, Depstech endoscopic camera kind of cool. I'll leave a link in the uh, description uh, where uh, I bought it on Amazon. But the great thing about this thing is um, that it, it, it has a flexible, formable um, camera end. So basically, uh, you can get behind uh, corners, blind spots, anything you need um, to um, see what's behind something, see what's inside something. So go, it goes where your eyes don't go. Uh, I think it was like $30, $40, whatever. And uh, I've used this a thousand times to uh, check things out. I've put this in uh, spark plug holes and motors to see what the, the cylinder walls look like. And uh, let me let me bring you around here and I'll show you uh, what I did uh, to diagnose my um, heater core issue. It's really cool. Okay, so let me kind of bring you in here. So here we are, glove box, kind of going to the passenger side footwell. And you'll see this hole that usually isn't there. Well, I used a, uh, I guess a three quarter inch uh, drill and I drilled the hole. Now you always wanna be careful of the AC condense, or the AC evaporative core and your uh, heater core. Um, so you just kinda of have to know where everything lays um, and pray to God you don't drill through all those items, but drill a hole. And then all I did was, this is kinda of tough to do here. All I did was is put the camera in the hole and maneuvered it around and I'm gonna throw some videos up on uh, the, uh, the little cutaways here and you can see the videos I got, the pictures I got, and I didn't have to remove one bolt. I didn't have to take anything apart. It was just used to uh, diagnose the problem. What a great tool this thing is. Um, like I said, it's like 30, 40 bucks. It's on Amazon and um, I don't know if you could see here, uh, but when you turn it on, the batteries are dead right now. It has LED lights, so um, it's all bright. And you can turn the you can turn up and down the, the brightness of the uh, lights and everything. It's, like I said, I, I can't talk enough about how how much I've used this in the past and uh, how helpful it's been. So here's a video of the actual footage of the camera as I was weaving itself through the uh, heater core box, and you can see the culprit right there there's the heater core and as i navigated down towards the i guess it's the the back end uh you can see it's all green and rusted and you can see the corrosion and everything and it's it's pretty amazing i mean look at that right there ah that's just gross so i got a couple good still shots of that um but yeah i mean all i did was just drill the hole in the box and again you got to be careful where you're drilling right um, but uh, I drilled the hole in the box and uh, just poked around until I got a really good angle of the uh, heater core and um, hit record. It allows you to take pictures. It allows you to take video. I mean, it's not like 1080 uh, high def video, but I mean, you can see you really don't need it. 
Um, it's probably one of the most useful diagno diagnostic tools I have in, uh, in my garage uh, because it goes where you can't see. Um, and it really helps, you know, I mean, if I'm going to spend all this time and effort to move the heater core box and it just, <laughs> I'd hate for it to just be like the clogged, um, condensation tube. Um, but again, in this case, I knew it wasn't because I had the green stuff coming down and everything, but this just kind of firms it up, right? I mean, look at that. Oh, that's just insulation, but look at that green sludge. I don't even know if that's nuclear toxic waste. I, I literally have no clue what that is, but that's some bad shit right there. Ah, man. Can't believe that. That took like a two-minute video. Kind of shows you all the functionality of this camera. Wow. So my approach on this repair is going to be pretty simple. Um, I've done it in the past. I think uh, maybe about 10 years ago, I did it on my 99XJ. I had another, uh, actually, ironically, it was another 99XJ uh, that was actually purple. So... Shouldn't have got rid of that one. Then I'd have two. Anywho, all water under the bridge. Um, the easiest thing to do is to give yourself the most amount of room. Um, you have to drop that heater box and the whole dash has to come out. So my plan is, uh, is to remove both uh, front passenger and front driver seat. The center console has to come out. You have to drop the steering wheel. You have to take the glove box out, the airbag, all of those things. So if you kind of keep that in mind... Um, you know, your area of work is like the front dash. So even to the point where I'm taking down or removing the, um, the, uh, the, the, the plastic rails that go, uh, I guess into the, <clears throat> the body. Um, I'm going to have a video of all this, but my, the point I'm trying to make here is remove as much as you can, because you don't want to get into a point where you have it just, just ready to come out and you have to remove a panel or you have to remove the seat. Or if I had just remove the seat i would have been you know done the shop a half hour earlier just take the time do it right and if you can of course if you can do all these things um, remove the seats center console comes out the whole dash and i'm just going to kind of tilt my dash out i am not going to remove the whole thing um it's going to involve toe straps bungee cords shoe strings all that good stuff so maybe even a couple uh phone charging cords i'll wrap around there i don't know uh, but that's really um, kind of the rules of the road for this repair is to remove everything that you um, can to make it a, uh, a less painful um, removal. So let's start the job right and disconnect the battery. Now that we have the seat out, you can see two things. One, we have a lot more room to maneuver and unbolt the dash from body and two man i have not really done a good job at keeping up with vacuuming so this will definitely be addressed uh before the seat goes back in pretty embarrassed here folks my apologies for having such a dirty jeep I'm not a really good jeep owner at this point in time we're going to take care of the uh easy pickings the uh center console the glove box the radio dash bezel and all those things so uh, let's get started screws holding down the top of the armrest console so we're going to have our lovely assistant take those off i figured i would get some help oh boy, maybe this isn't a good idea that's one and then we're going to do a really great thing we're going to uh, put all of our screws one? yeah that one too we're going to do all of our screws in a uh, bag and tape it to the part in which we remove so when we just put it back on we know what we're looking for thank you and then that armrest too yes. those two yep That's it. And one more. I mean, we'll, well, armrest is pretty full of junk, isn't it? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, there's the empty box. And you'll see here, um, there's an old video uh, when I had the WJ where I installed a uh, auxiliary uh, power outlet for the back seat. And I got that all wired up there and I'll uh, leave a little link in the uh, video on um, how that all works. But yeah, kids in, this, kids in the back seat have... Uh, power to plug in their phones and whatnot but anyway back to our main story um i like to use a um a plastic little pry pry tool to uh get off the uh, plastic panels these are kind of fragile so you'll just pop these up and then everybody knows uh to pull, i'll need two hands for this uh, you kind of pull in maybe i won't 
Yep, I will. Um, and to pull the uh, T-handle off. So I'll spare you the embarrassment of uh, <laughs> watching me try to do this one-handed. And just like that, the T-handle and the cover has been removed. And then we'll do the same thing here. Hit that in the four-wheel high or neutral just to give yourself some room. And then we'll just kind of pry up gently. It's, again, it's 21-year-old plastic, so you don't want to go ape shit on it. I'm sorry, ape doo-doo. <laughs> oh, come on, don't break, will ya? Ah, there we go. And then, of course, there's uh, the light, so you just got to kind of un unscrew that. And out pops the, uh, the bulb, and now you have that. And then what you'll see here are a couple mounting screws. You just take them out, nothing fancy. In order to wiggle out the center console, you have to have the handbrake up as well to get it to uh, get a watch out for the heater tube. Um, but again, you'll just wiggle this out, and it'll come right out. You'll see that I removed the uh, radio bezel. You'll want to take that out first before removing the uh, center console. It just makes things a little bit easier. Was take off this, I guess, uh, I guess front dash bezel. It's held on by a bunch of screws. Uh, see right here, right there, right there. And then we'll also take this out too. And there's uh, three screws under here. You'll see them. Let's see, three screws under here that hold that up. So there's a plastic outer panel and then a metal inner panel. We'll, we'll bring it back once we get to that part. So my neighbor is cutting his lawn now, so hopefully you can still hear my voice as we're walking through the deconstruction of the dash. Uh, next thing we're gonna wanna do is to take out the driver and passenger side, I guess like um, little uh, dash corners where the vents uh, tie into. So there's like a little screw hidden down there. You need a little tiny screwdriver. And then I took the screw out of there because that was a pain in the ass. Uh, so there's a screw up here and then one down there. So um, we'll take this one out and then the driver's side has the same thing. So we'll just uh, remove both of those bad boys. Okay, now that you've taken off the uh, driver and passenger little vents with those couple screws, you're down to the uh, final couple parts of uh, removal. And the steering column needs to be dropped. And there's a bolt there and a bolt there. 13 millimeters on that. Uh, two bolts to remove the uh, steering. And we're gonna drop that bad boy and we're gonna let it lay. My dog is barking. Let it lay right on the uh, driver's seat. So let's see how that turns out. Oh, baby. <laughs> giggity, giggity. So I pulled up the carpet and I got a little bit of rust. Um, probably just from the uh, AC condensation kind of running down. Um, I'll have to investigate that, but uh, I used a wire wheel, cleaned it up, and uh, we're going to put some poor 15 on this floor. There is no way I can tolerate rust on this bad boy. So we'll clean this up and make it real nice, but we'll do that when everything's buttoned up. So for now, we'll just pretend that's not there. Uh, we're at a pretty good point now. Um, there's uh, 10 millimeter bolts here and here, and you'll see them. I mean, it's gonna be pretty obvious, right? Uh, 10 millimeter bolts that run the length of the dash. So we'll go on ahead and uh, take those off. And then you'll see here, the bolt there, two bolts here, and then the other bad boy hiding back there. Those are all 13 millimeters, so we're gonna take this bracket out. And then you'll see under the kick panel, driver and passenger side both have that bad boy right there. That's another, I believe, 13 millimeter. So we'll loosen that all the way. And then under that kick panel too, uh, where the hood release is, it's the same exact bolt. Um, looks like that, but on the other side. So we'll just take that out. And I'm trying to spare you the, uh, the actual video of uh, releasing bolts. Uh, unloosening bolts, things like that. You know, this is just to kind of give you the idea of, you know, where your contact points are, where does it mount to, what bolts are there, and then how to take it out. Um, you know, this isn't, uh, you're not going to see me wrenching on bolts and everything like that, but uh, all you're looking for are the bolts that attach the dash to the body. And we'll just remove those puppies, put them in a baggie, save them for next time, and uh, keep on moving. So, Let's see where we end up when we take all those parts off. Yeehaw. Well, there's the dash. Uh, I got the uh, toe strap or the ratchet strap tied down to one of the little connector points on the uh, on the actual dash uh, structure itself. And then I just have it 
hooked up to one of the uh oh shit bars <laughs> um i'm putting all the parts i'm taking off in the back of the jeep so just keeps it easy for storage um uh, but there it is um there's our end goal right there the heater box um this is actually going a lot smoother than i had anticipated right molly <laughs> so um i guess the next thing for us to do is to now i've already had the ac uh r134a refrigerant evac uh from one of the local shops they just basically they don't charge you anything of course because you're giving them free uh, uh refrigerant uh but they just suck it out and there's no freon in there uh refrigerant in there right now um we'll see how far i get tonight uh there's a whole bunch of bolts down here it seems like a pain this might be more of a sunday thing for me but as you can see, real, there's five bolts. There's one here, one there, one hidden fella right back here that you kind of can't see, but there's a bolt there. Um, and basically this is the, uh, these are the bolts that hold the heater box to the firewall. And there's probably a couple of them down here. I can't see where they're at, but they're back there somewhere. Um, but there are five of them. We've identified three. There's the one there and the uh, two and the three and i believe four and five are back here somewhere but i'll bring you in once i uh, get a little closer look probably got to take a couple things off um what we'll do what we'll do in the meantime is we will clamp clamp off the heater heater lines so no coolant leaks out we'll move this out of the way and then we'll also uh go on ahead and disconnect those ac lines and that'll probably give us uh, better access to those uh those hidden bolts but uh yeah we're making good progress all right before we go on ahead and uh take those bolts out of the uh, firewall we're going to disconnect these lines uh this basically hooks to the uh well, this is already actually uh, that's right i already disconnected that so we're going to take that off that needs to come off that's the vacuum lines that do the defrost vent floor the mixer uh that is the plug for our um Oh, I'm getting tired here. This will probably be for tomorrow. This is the plug for the uh, airbags. And anything else that connects the heater box to the vehicle, we're just going to disconnect. There might be a couple little hidden things, but these are the things that are pretty obvious. And uh, I think there's like a wire tie. Um, so I'll bring you in. Uh, oh, and of course the antenna. You have to unhook the antenna. And these are my fog lights um, that I have uh, wired up here, just kind of cinched away here. So we'll, we'll just cut that wire. But yeah, basically what you're trying to do is free all of the connections that are on the heater box, uh, take them off. So when you take those bolts off the firewall, the lines off the, uh, the AC, EVAP core, and the heater core, box will just fall right out, in theory. Okay, so here's kind of where we're at. I was ready to call it a night, but uh, I got to poking around a little bit and uh, actually was going pretty smooth. So I kept on, uh, kept it on. Um, over here is like oh, a lot of evap stuff right so uh i unplugged all the evap uh stuff there's a couple 10 millimeter i'm sorry uh, eight millimeter bolts it holds a bracket on uh and here's kind of what it looks like right here it's this guy right here there's three bolts that hold the bracket on to the the uh, inner fender it's nothing big uh, plug goes in there this hooks up to another tube that's down there. I have it marked with blue tape down there. Everything that I unplugged, I just have the uh, ends uh, taped up so I know what actually has to go back. Um, and there's only um, one way they can all go on. So um, there's no like six different connectors and they all have to be, you know, a certain way. It's one connector goes to each one. So, um, and there are five bolts that hold the heater box to the firewall. There's one down there you can kind of see that right down there and then uh tough to tell here uh two three through there and then four and five are along the firewall and you can see one is kind of further up can't really tell and then there's one all the way down there that i didn't see that's the fifth one that was kind of tough to get uh these are 7 16 bolts and um i used an open-ended wrench to get that bottom one right there uh take the uh, transmission dipstick out it gives you a little bit more room um as you can see i've already disconnected the uh, heater core i have the lines clamped off and now we're at the stage where we're going to take these bad boys off so let's um get those tools 
and I'll show you how to disconnect those. Okay, so these clips for the AC lines, they just um, basically uh, lift out. So I have the one already for the uh, thinner side. Oh, doesn't, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it with these, but they basically just pull up. You can see this if I get it with my, put my meat hooks in here. Yeah, there you go. And that's what they look like right there. So they'll just pull in, pull up, and away we go. Okay, I know where that goes. All right, next we get the AC line disconnectors and I think we might be golden. Oh, don't forget, see that little bolt right there? That's gonna have to come off too. Uh, because if you try to, uh, does it? I bet you it doesn't because it'll come along with the firewall. Nope, that doesn't need to be taken off. My, my fault, Never mind. That can stay on. These have to come uh, to be disconnected. So you're one gonna get yourself a set of uh, quick disconnect tools. And the one I have is the blue one. It's the half inch one. And basically spring loaded guy here. And it goes around the line. Sorry, my hands are in the way. It goes around the line. And then those little fingers engage into the, I guess the connectors that connect the two tubes together. And you push in. Let's see. Yep, I got it. Okay. Let's see if I can show you here. And you see the lines are. You're not going to believe this, but my <laughs> battery in my camera died. And look what happened when that battery died. The heater box ended up on my workbench. Weird. So, um, basically I unhooked what we talked about in the video prior to my phone dying and I wiggled this thing out and here it is. There's no real mystery to it. Um, it's actually pretty simple. Um, you don't have to completely take the dashboard out to get this heater box out from under the dash. Just have to kind of, um, you know, with that, uh, toe strap, just lean it out of the way, gently caress it out of the, uh, out of the way. So um, this is going to be a two-part video. So part one is the removal of the heater box. Uh, part two will start with installing the heater core and the reinstallation. So hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I know we kind of glossed over a lot of things. Um, it's not very difficult. Um, oh, there is one cool thing I want to show you in here. I don't know if you can see. Let me turn my headlamp on. Look at that. That's... Um, gross ass coolant that's been sitting in there for a while so i'm gonna uh take this heater box out and i'm going to oh god that's so gross i'm gonna wash it so very very gross Ugh. so anyway um here are the bolts here's what the back of it looks like there's the one two three four five over there heater core evap core and then all these bolts kind of just keep it all together it's like a clamshell if you will right here 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 all that fun stuff and it just splits in half but we'll go through that video in part two so hey look uh click like and subscribe hope you found this video enjoyable um a lot of stuff thrown at you all at once but um if you have any comments anything i left out um anything you typically do again this is how i do it um the end result is the heater box is out you might have different uh, steps. You might do them in different orders. You might have a different procedure. Um, this is how I do it. So if you have an easier way, you saw me struggling with something that uh, you're like, hey, man, that's ridiculous. If you did it this way, it'd be far less complicated. So please comment in the comment box because I would love to know a better way to do this. Um, so thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next video. Take care.